goals for 2021. What you're looking at right now is basically my goal for Q1 2021, where I've got 44,000 invested into dividends with roughly, like I said in my previous video, I was looking for around a 7% return. Uh, between 7, 7.25 is my, is my hard goal for my dividend plays for 2021. Uh, with a, an annual income of 31.58 and 31.58 let's go 31.58 uh, if we were actually to stop there divided by 12 would bring us to about 263 dollars a month of you know quote unquote passive income which is basically my goal my my, my goal for my m1 finance account is 15 at least I should say 1500 for an early retirement abroad and so I'm basically kind of projecting where I, I want myself to be um, seeing how I need to get there how much I need to invest every single month and so I and of course uh, for those that don't know uh, because of the pandemic I've actually had to slow down with uh, the uh, basically the side business that I started for those that don't know I do work as a nurse I had a company that I started way back when I was 17 years old had I ran that company from about 17 till about my 32nd birthday and then had to focus on school as I was back I was in nursing school at the time and foolishly gave up uh, my business to for a separate passion and of course that ignited another passion which was to go back into being a business owner. And so I started a new business uh, back in 2017 as a private, doing private, uh, basically private companion, private home care here in the city. I do live in NYC. I've been living in Manhattan for the past eight years. And so decided, I, of course, for early retirement, I did need a passive income, both uh, so you know sources of income as well as you know wanting to get back into having my own business because i do i have worked in many different hospitals many different companies and i've seen a lot of the shortcomings and i've kind of wanted to dip my toe back in so i did that back in 2017 but of course with the with the uh, pandemic i had to slow down because prices became very expensive uh, with you know basically buying ppe in terms of masks and gloves gowns hand sanitizer became all those items became very expensive which basically would have eaten up into my uh, profits and i would have generated a loss and so it was easier for me both health wise and of course it allowed me to work more days in the hospital to help patients um who are at risk of losing their life so i put for the most part i have still have a couple of patients that i do see but for the most part i haven't been pushing it but for 2021 especially with more of the revelations that have been of course coming out in regards uh, to the coronavirus if you had the opportunity to check out the latest in the new york times revealing that up to 90 percent of people testing positive carried barely any virus and that was basically an article uh, that was posted that's getting very little chatter uh, by the new york times that many of the tests were entirely uh, too sensitive many of the tests were entirely too sensitive that were indicating people were in essence positive for the virus but had very few viral particles obviously in them so the tests were too sensitive to actually contain quote unquote the spread and then even uh i believe even Elon Musk uh, said something very similar. Yeah, even even Elon Musk himself, somebody asked him uh, in regards to the testing, even Elon Musk said, some of the tests we initially tried at Tesla were 50% false positive, including some from major medical device companies. Too many testing methods were approved too quickly. It says, wouldn't blame the FDA though. It says public demand public was demanding fast test approval and so it just goes to show you that a lot of the you know the fear mongering that has been going on within the country is more related to false information even the cdc even having to update uh, where it says according to the cdc only 96 83 9683 9, people died in the united states with only having covid-19 
listed as their certificate. And so the CDC basically came back um, saying 94% of the people who died had were, were, were died re, uh, related to previous underlying medical conditions and not primarily related to COVID. And most of those were influenza and pneumonia. So for a lot of those patients who supposedly had COVID as their cause of death, they were finding out that most of it was related to influenza and pneumonia, respiratory failure, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, uh, vascular and unspecified dementia, cardiac arrest, heart failure, renal failure, uh, intentional and unintentional injury, poisoning, or and other adverse events, and of course, other medical conditions. And so a lot of this, of course, if you've followed uh, on any sort of a website that gives you the statistics, you'll see currently in the United States, 183,000 with you know more than 6 million of these people supposedly contracting the virus with, of course, 183,000 current deaths. The percent has been, has been going down for the past three months or so. And so this is why I've been uh, investing a little bit more into the market because like I had said in my previous video, I had been, I had been, uh, believing that the market was going to be trading higher. Like I said in my previous video, uh, the market did trade higher. I've been watching, watching it here in terms of, of the supports and resistances. And so like I said, that the market was more than likely going to trade down. We were gonna wait for a bounce from here. This was the, this was the previous resistance point for both uh, 16, 17 and in parts of 18 and into 19, for this, so this resistance level. And so naturally the market came to it here, came to it here, and then bounced off of it right here. And so we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. And of course, everybody, if you look on YouTube, everybody is preaching doom and gloom, the world is ending. And it's not and it's not related to things that are economically damaging to the to the country. It's not that people have bad business practices or people are, you know, foolishly spending money in terms of businesses. Uh, it's predominantly related to a lot of the fear mongering that is going on with COVID-19. And we've so hopefully with the coming election, I believe that a lot of this will go away, which is why I am investing as such. I've put a little bit more money um, into my risk. Currently, as you can see, I've made a little over uh, 1100 so far in my risk portfolio and looking to get the dividend portion at the end of the year, which I've got quite a bit of time, I still got a couple of months. So we're, we're going to push this at least to 20K for the end of the year. And then hopefully for Q1, by the end of Q1, uh, which is basically what January, February, March, by the end of March, we're looking to push this to about 44,000, which means I basically need to start putting in some work for 2021 uh, and prior to that. And so that's basically my update for the portfolio of what I've of what I have been doing uh, in terms of dividend performance. Uh, currently, of course, for the month, I think I generated about 30, about thirty three dollars or so in dividends for the month of August at 13.3. So I think it was about 30 some 30 something odd dollars. But of course, uh, for the month of August was not necessarily going to be very good. But this is basically uh, my current goal, I've updated my current goal for 2021. I, for 2021, my 2020 goal was, of course, 20K in just in dividends. And of course, uh, we're pretty much going to be right on track. I'm only 4K short. I'll probably put that in uh, either maybe by the end of the month or so. We'll see if, we'll, if I'll just dump it all in because I've been looking for good risk Um Good risk stocks, and then basically taking the profits and then dumping and in, dumping them into take, dumping the profits into my dividend portfolio, and then reallocating uh, the principal of my risk. I'll always have a risk portion of my portfolio, and that's just basically to take advantage of certain stocks that I feel are going to make decent moves, kind of like the the GPS stock. Uh, I did sell GPS right on here. I bought it at about seven seven dollars, and sold it in here. At about uh, fifteen, between fifteen and fifteen fifty, I got out, and then I rolled all those profits 
um, into dividend playing stocks. And the reason I sold it was because you can see right here, there was a lot of resistance that was going to be around between like 16 and maybe $18. And we're starting to see, as you can see, we're starting to see pullback, pullback, pullback. Uh, the, the, like I said, the stock could go up. The reason, of course, it went up was because of the deal with Kanye West. Um, or the easy, but then like a week or two later, he was out there saying, you know, he was going to pull out of it. So it's like, you know, the man is just not, uh, the man is very unpredictable, uh, especially when he's not taking his medication. So uh, market doesn't like uncertainty. And of course, we're seeing some modest pullback every time it tries to hit 18 backs off, 18 backs off. And then of course, again, backing off again, the stock may come back down to the 50 and retest 15. I was thinking of actually getting some puts on it, but that's a whole entire different uh subject and of course basically been putting money um into mo just like t looking at at and t i've been putting a little bit more money into into at and t and other stocks like of course like prudential i'm adding a little bit into some of the financials i'm hoping that we'll actually get a retest of 64 because i missed it initially down here but for the market in terms of the market like i said i'm thinking that we are basically kind of right on point of where we're basically pulling back you should be able to see that right there right you should be able to see where the market traded sideways for multiple of these and that is literally where we pulled back to today so it doesn't surprise me that the market did pull back to that point i think we'll push towards uh 20 i uh, will we'll push toward 29k where we'll see a little bit of a of resistance and sideways trading so it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing a little bit of a pullback because the market did the exact same thing here back in january of 2020 for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven almost 12 days before the market actually pushed back up and then again as you can see it fell right back here this was just around the time of the beginning of the pandemic where we started hearing about COVID, but you can see the retest right here. And then again, the retest right here in this candlestick right here, uh, coming back to basically where we are today, right? So that's 23, almost 23, four. And that's basically where we are today. And so I'm looking for the market to push higher to 25 K and then we'll see, take it from there. I'm thinking the market is going to push for, push for 30 K. I think we'll end up making, new highs by the end of the year uh, especially as we start to see and realize that what we've been told uh, from a health standpoint that it's really not as dangerous as many would like us to believe especially if you've been paying attention to some of the you know the rioting and the protesting and these huge mass gatherings that have been going on and, you know not just within new york but in multiple states where they've had multiple large gatherings and of course uh, they, the only time that they come out and basically acknowledge, you know, the coronavirus is when it's a Republican, like when Trump had the, the you know, the, the RNC, uh, when Trump had basically his rally and then there were like COVID, COVID, COVID. But when all these protesters were out there, you know, uh, for the, you know, the March on Washington, that was like 50,000 people deep and no one said anything about social distancing. In fact, Doctors were coming out saying that it was actually necessary for these people to come out and making excuses about, you know, they had masks, so social distancing wasn't needed. And so we're seeing, you know, a lot of this is basically a ploy uh, from different parts of, you know, different parties within the government. It is not necessarily the type of uh, outbreak that warrants the concern that we've been giving in these past few months.